All right, so I looked at the question that they gave you, and I'm going to try to explain all the parts of it that I can in the shortest amount of time possible. The question, it's not really that complicated, and you may notice that most of the time I tend to do my questions on a board where I can write on the screen. In this case, I'm using an actual camera. It's because I'm trying to show you why it actually works out to be true. Anyway, the question says, given A parallel to B, the measurement of angle 3 is equal to 5x plus 10, and the measurement of angle 5 is equal to 3x plus 10. Find the value of x. Now, they want you to use these two lines, which they're considering parallel, so I'm assuming this is probably what they consider to be A and this is B. Now this line that goes through, a line that connect, that intersects with two parallel lines is called a transversal. Now the thing about a transversal that you have to understand is that it locks the values of these angles in for each set of parallel lines that it goes through or each line of a parallel line group that goes through. So there's something called corresponding angles. That's one of the angle types. A corresponding angle would be like say of this little cross right here and the top left is angle 1. Down here in this little cross, the top angle is angle 5, or top left angle is angle 5. So I can say that angle 1 and angle 5 correspond. So I can say that they're corresponding angles. Incidentally enough, I can say that they're equal. So let's take a look using this um, piece of patty paper, which is what you put hamburger patties on. So I've got my angle 1. I'm going to try to do it in a little better so you can see it a little clear. So I've got my angle. Now if I take it down here, you'll notice if I match it up to angle 5, it's exactly the same thing. So I can say that if an angle is corresponding, it has a, uh, an equal uh, or congruent angle measure. So they're equal to each other. Um, also, if I look and flip this over this way, you can see that angles that are across from each other in their individual uh, sections, so uh, angles that make an X per se, um, are called vertical angles, and they're also congruent. Incidentally enough, that would mean that angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical angles, and they're congruent. And I can look down here, and if I take this down, well, there you go. That means angle 8 and angle 4, because they're corresponding, see, top, uh, bottom right, bottom right, those corresponding angles are congruent. Now, the relationships that are built based on that information are uh, angles in relationship, or uh, relationships based on the placement of the uh, parallel lines. And there's two basic ideas. There's interior sets, and there's exterior sets. Interior pairs are pairs where both angles are inside the parallel lines. So in this case, your angle 3 and angle 5, angle 3 and angle 5, see how they're inside the parallel lines? Those are interior angles. And they also have a secondary name, uh, and usually there's, uh, in this case, you name them based off the transversal, like their relationship with the transversal. Lost my brain there for a second, I'm sorry. So they're both inside, but they're either same side, Sometimes the same side's called consecutive, or they're alternate angles. So in this case, 3 and 5 are interior angles because they're on the inside, and they're on the same side of the transversal because they're both to the left. So those are same side interior angles. 4 and 6 are also same side interior angles because they're both inside and they're on the same side as each other. Uh, alternate. Uh, alternate interior angles would be interior angles that are on different sides. So my alternate interiors, in this case, alternate interior would be 3 and 6 and 4 and 5 because they're interior and they're alternate sides of the transversal. Uh, exterior angles work the same. Uh, you have Exteriors would be outside the parallel lines. 1, 2, 7, and 8 are all exterior angles. And then their relationships are built on which side the transversal they're on. So 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're on the outside of the parallel lines. Uh, 2 and 7 are also alternate exterior angles. Uh, same side exterior angles are 1 and 7 and 2 and 8. So that's all the names of the things that you need to know. Now let's get to the actual question that you asked, right? So we see that measurement of angle 3 and measurement of angle 5 are alternate interior angles. A quick way to determine this type of question is that uh, when you have this type of setup where you have um, a parallel line and a transversal and they ask you about two different angles, they're either going to be congruent 
which means equal, essentially, or they're going to be supplementary, which means you add them up, which means the sum of them equals 180. Now we need to figure out what that is, so we're going to use uh, we're going to start with one of the angles, just pick it at random, and then we're going to do uh, left, right, left, right marks. What I mean is I'm going to pick either one or two. I always start at the top, I don't know why, a and I make a mark. So I go left on my next section down, which would be where the three and four are, I go to the right, then I go back to the left, and then I go back to the right. Now, if both angles of the pair that I'm looking for are marked, which means they both have that little circle part on them, so 5 and 1, 4 and 8, 4 and 5, 1 and 8, any of those pairs that are marked like that are congruent. So if I was asked about those angles, I could say that angle 1 is equal to angle 4, angle 5 is equal to angle 8, angle 8 is equal to angle 1, so on and so forth. So if they're both marked, it's congruent. If they're both unmarked, also congruent. So in this case, 2 is equal to 3, and 6, and 7, and any other of those combinations, as long as they're unmarked. Now, if they're marked, they're equal to each other. So 1 and 4, 5 and 8, any combination of those angles in 2s would be equal to each other. So you'd write down their values, set them equal to each other, and solve. The only time that they're supplementary is when 1 is marked and 1 is not marked. In that case, I'm going to have to set them equal to 180 by adding them together. So to bring it a little closer, if they're both marked or both unmarked, they're congruent. So set them equal to each other. If, they're both, if one is marked and one is not, sum is 180. So in our question, it says give an angle 3 and angle 5. So 3 and 5. So I'm going to look on my paper. I see I started here at the top left, and I marked left, right, left, right. You'll notice now that angle 3 is not marked, and angle 5 is marked. That means that the two angles are supplementary. So what I'm going to do is look at their value. So I'm going to say the measurement of angle 3, sorry, plus the measurement of angle 5 is equal to 180. Now, if they'd both been marked, I would say the measurement of angle 3 is equal to the measurement of angle 5. If they were both unmarked, measurement of angle 3 still equal to measurement of angle 5. But in this case, one marked, one not marked. So what I'm going to do is just plug in the information for each one. So my measurement of angle 3 is 5x plus 10, plus my measurement of angle 5 is 3x plus 10. Then I'm going to set that equal to 180. And then it's sort of just an algebraic question. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to combine my like terms together. So I've got 5 and 3 gives me 8x. And then I have 10 plus 10, which is, of course, 20. From here, I need to get x by itself. The, on the same side of the line, the furthest thing away from it is the 20. So I'm going to subtract 20. 180 minus 120 is 160. To get rid of times 8, I'm going to divide by 8. And x is equal to 20. So that's how you find the value of x. Remember, if they're both marked, they're equal to each other. If they're both unmarked, they're equal to each other. If one is marked and one is not, then they're supplementary, so you have to add them up, set them equal to 180. Now, another type of question that you might see is they might further it and say, what's the value of measurement of angle 3? And by the way, x can be negative. That's totally possible. What you would have to do to make um, measurement of angle 3 is to plug this 20 in for x here. So I would do 5 times 20, which would be um, 100, plus 10 is 110. And if you look at the angle in the picture, yours is probably closer to 110 than this one is. Uh, this is a little bit more. It's a, it's a uh, obtuse angle. So I can say that 110 is a reasonable guess for their value. But as far as this question is concerned, all it wants you to do is find the value of x. So we looked at our thing, uh, looked at our transversal and parallel lines, marked one at the top, went right, left, right, saw that one was marked, one was not. That meant they were supplementary. We set them equal to 180, combine like terms, solve all the way down, 
and you get x is 20. So that's it. It's a nice quick way to sort of get the answer um, without having to remember all the alternate interior angles are supplementary. Uh, same side, or alternate interior angles are congruent. Same side, interior angles are supplementary and all that stuff. See, I even messed one up and I've done this forever. So left, right, left, right. Once you set it up, it should work fine for you. Both marked, congruent. Both unmarked, congruent. One marked, one not, supplementary. So I hope this is helpful. If it's not, just let me know and I will try to do it again.